Hello everybody, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I hope you've had a great week so far. <clears throat> Excuse my hoarse voice, I notice it gets worse as the night goes on. It's just the way it is. <clears throat> so, we need to have a chat, you guys. <laughs> Welcome to my new subscribers. I really appreciate you being here. Uh, I value all my subscribers and I thank you for your comments and your sweet comments and thank you, you guys. Anyways, there's a lot going on, right? There's things <clears throat> to talk about with Don Wells, right? So yeah, uh, big exciting news, Don Wells, the family official channel put out that Don was going to put out some letters and they wanted to let us know ahead of time. And, uh, you know, it just cracks me up. I'm like, what? Do, Tim Mullins, what do you think Don Wells is a star? I mean, like, why does everybody, why do we need to care if Don Wells sent a letter? <clears throat> Why do we need to uh, get excited about this and have a, you know, a prelude and tell us how we're supposed to act and react to this letter? It's, it's really bizarre, you guys. Tim Mullins, you're really bizarre, for real. And I cannot believe that you like to hang around with suspects like this. I mean, you're sitting here calling him a Christian. Tim, Don is not a Christian. You know, you can take God's name and use it, and you can read scriptures when you're in jail and pretend like you're a Christian, but it is not a Christian from his behavior. Tim, you need to go read your Bible because it says you shall judge, you shall judge a tree by its fruit. And that's how I judged him. So you can come, people can come after me and say, well, you're supposed to be a Christian, but you're judging. But Jesus said to judge a tree by its fruit and to discern and to look for false prophets and people who claim to know Jesus. But, you know, Don's one of them guys that finds God when he's in trouble. So he was actually, you know, he only went to church for a little while and he was missing all the time. So anyways, I want to talk about this, a lot of things tonight. But first of all, uh, I don't know how many of you subscribers have seen this. How many of you have, when this first came out, and this was like, you know, the week of summer going missing. And uh, so it was either like a week or a week and a half. I don't know, but it was very close to when she went missing. So his pastor asked him if he wants to come up and say anything. Okay. This is brand new. His daughter's missing. They're searching for the searchers are still out there searching. Roads are still blocked. Okay. This is still going on. His daughter is just brand new missing. And I want you not only to listen to what Don has to say when his daughter first went missing. And I also want you to pay attention to the people around him. Because number one, they're not very loving to Don, not very supportive. They look at him kind of strange. But listen what Don has to say in his prayer. He does not mention his daughter. He does not ask for whatever happened, please bring her back. He doesn't cry out to God for that. Uh, nothing. Uh... It wasn't until the very, very end that he actually said her name. But what I find interesting 
is that he said, you know, he's asking God for forgiveness here. Not asking God to please bring his daughter home, but asking God for forgiveness. And as far as I know, Zab Girl's the only one. That's the name of her channel, Zab Girl. She's the only one that has this video because I've searched all over for it. Because in the beginning, you could get it from the church. But now, I guess they took their videos down. But listen to what Don has to say here for his daughter. Respect, love, and thank you for everything. Um, just pray that you'll please forgive us our sins and help us carry on and, uh, and let us all give our lives to you, God, in every way. Let me carry my cross from here on out, Lord. Thank you, Father, for everything. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please answer this woman. She's been the light of my life for 20 years. I thank you for that, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for it. Amen. Thank you. I don't see much love and compassion in that church. And I don't, you know, from now on, let me carry my cross. So Don hasn't been carrying his cross. But I want you to be aware that uh, this guy right here. Let me carry my cross. Yeah, he is a registered sex offender for violent crimes against children in that church. Okay. Poor Summer. She's been surrounded by those kind of predators. But uh, to me... From his very first video, he really does not reflect a father whose daughter's missing. I don't care what people want to say. These are my opinions. These are my feelings. But he is not upset. He is not that upset. And he looks like he wants to be a preacher guy. Some kind of minister, you know. And uh, the people around him are not loving and supportive and compassionate. Because they act like they don't really even know him very well. And uh, all he's doing is asking forgiveness. And I would like to know why. What happened, Don? I think it's time for Don to start talking, don't you? But I want to um, show you something else. So I'm going to discuss the letter that Don put out. And I'm going to discuss some other things that I heard. But I just want to show you something real quick. Uh, I think it's important. It's a reminder. I hope you'll go to it and uh, look uh, at this. So, hold on. I got to go find it. I don't know how I keep getting signed out. I don't know if somebody's doing that to me. But I keep getting signed out on YouTube. And then I can't go back to my channels that I like. So I don't know what's going on. Okay, so. This is the name of this channel. If you have not subscribed. Please, by all means, do. Because, uh. Steve Johnson, that's Steve Johnson, he's awesome, and he did a video, and if you didn't see it, I recommend that you go there and watch this whole video and watch he, how he analyzes this, but I'm just going to take a small clip from this under fair use, because the part, sorry. Get your TV together. Best of live and on demand direct TV stream. Call 1 800 direct TV to save $30 over two months. Turn your compassion into action when you volunteer with the American Red Cross. Communities across the country. Okay. Hey guys, so, what's up? Welcome to another edition of The Truth to Lies. That's Steve Johnson. I just want to get to a part of this letter 
that he discusses something. And then to the end part of it, the end of it. Exclamation that. Next line, please bow for the Lord's Prayer. I'm way too far. Hold on. Okay, so wait. No, maybe I'm not way too far. I think he, yeah. You know, he says in the first part that since you've been gone, I've been completely devastated. Well, I bet you are, but you haven't really acted like it. And uh, it's just really strange that all you do is think about yourself down a lot. But anyways, I'm just moving ahead here. Okay, so anyway, Steve Johnson, he's a statement analysis guy. He teaches uh, classes. He has YouTube class. I mean, classes that you can, on the internet or on his um, website, you can contact him and you can go get involved uh, and learn about statement analysis and stuff. But he's worked for the FBI for many years. And uh, he's, I just think he's an awesome guy, so please subscribe to this. But I just want to show you this, you know, couple little things here. He says, I'm sorry. That is, that is significant. I want to know what prompted him, what, what is going on in his mind that makes him say, I'm sorry. That's typically something that comes from someone that has some type of guilty knowledge. Or, I would like him to say something that, in a, you know, right after that, I'm sorry, that is very sincere. Um, what he says is, I'm sorry, my beautiful girl, but I completely lost my mind. He doesn't say what he did to lose his mind or what happened. Um, so it's a little ambiguous right here, but this is a this is an indication that he is feeling stress from guilt, stress that notice that he didn't say I'm sorry for not finding you. He's not saying that. I'm sorry for completely losing my mind. It's a psychological pressure relief statement. Is what it is. It's, he's able to say I'm sorry without actually saying, I'm sorry for whatever I did to you, whatever I caused to happen to you. He's not saying that, and he's been being ambiguous about it. And so, what, is, what does it mean I lost my mind, to lose my mind? Um, I note that he also qualified this as well. This is another qualifier that was uh, employed here. I completely lost my mind. So, uh, we have the use of the qualifier. He needs to call in reinforcements psychologically, linguistically to back up what he's saying. It's more of a convincing type statement now. I know that. Um, so I'm wondering, what does the story relate to? What does the completely lost his mind relate to? Does it relate to what he did at the time Summer disappeared? Is it a decision, perhaps, that he made that now he regrets? Um, something like that. You know, he's not really saying, but, but it seems like that he's referring back to something. You know, I completely lost my mind. It's, it's something in the past. Okay. Then he says, with so many thoughts of people har harming you, and I know you want to come home, and there's nothing I can do, I'm powerless. I'm powerless. With so many thoughts of people harming you. So it's a lot of thoughts of people harming you. And he doesn't separate this. He just keeps going with it. And I know you want to come home. I know you want to come home. So this comes on the heels of him saying that he's sorry for completely losing his mind. 
and he introduces the thought, so many thoughts of people harming Summer. And he says, I know you, can, you want to come home. So the question is, does he know where she is or where she went? If he knows that she wants to come home, I mean, that would be implied. Why did he need to state that? What's going on in his mind that pushes that out to the pen? And it takes more effort to write than in front of the to state it. That took more effort and time to think about it. And one of the eviscerates the decision that he made when he completed off his mind. And now he's saying he's sorry. Remember, he stated previously that he is aware of people that traffic kids. I'm not saying that's what happened. We don't know what happened to Summer. But it sure, this really raises some questions that really need to be addressed on what it is that he is sorry for that made him lose his mind. He's sorry he completely lost his mind. Okay. He says, so I ask God, please look over my precious daughter. Okay. I'm just going to fast forward a little bit and then we'll talk about it. Steve's good, isn't he? Yeah, he is. But you know what's amazing is that he is an expert in this. He has talked to so many people who were criminals. He's figured out a I mean, lot of cases. I couldn't find you. Uh, and not anything like that. Not even worth. I just want to get to this end part here. Yeah. Mo most of what I see here is that um, he's more on the, he speaks from an emotional level. And he is speaking with these irrational thoughts bouncing around in his head. And it reads like that. It just, there's, it's, it's kind of disjointed, the letter is. And. And so that's what's going on in his mind. All right. Well, I hope, with, with like everybody else, that there, the authorities are able to to solve this case. And 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 I really hope that DW and uh, and Mom um, do the right thing and let the authorities know what they know. And you know, I think the authorities have a pretty good idea of what's going on. And I think eventually that this case will be solved. Um, but for now, uh, we can just, all we can do is uh, keep the word out there. Um, everybody keep their ear to the ground because Summer's somewhere, obviously. She needs to be found. And, uh, you know, every time that, that uh, the folks or anybody close to them speaks or writes, we're going to get a little bit more information, another piece of the puzzle to put in there. And I think that's what we have right here. So, all right, everybody. Okay, so that was an excellent job, Steve. And he analyzed that. And to me, you guys, if you're the expert in it, then, you know, we should pay attention to the people who have something to say and not just YouTubers, you know what I mean? Um, I just wanted to go over to here and talk about uh, John's most recent letter, but I'm not going to show you the letter. Well, I, I I will, but the thing is that doesn't that part doesn't matter to me because I can tell that that wasn't John's writing. And if you go back to the video I just showed you from Truth to Lies, you can see John's handwriting. All of his handwriting on that letter, and it looks nothing like what he wrote. Uh, so, you know, I know Jonathan Lee Rich has talked about it, and he's right. And I'm glad that he called some of the news station, told him that wasn't even Dan's letter. So, but anyways, it doesn't matter because if somebody helped Don write it, because Don's not very good at writing, but um. Let's just talk about this and uh, Don's uh, official. Mr. Don Wells has sent a letter to his daughter, Summer Moon, Utah Wells. Has... Okay, that's not what I, I just want to see. Um, 
I just want to, okay, listen. Mr. Don Wells has sent a letter to his daughter, Summer Moon Utah Wells, as well as a letter to the persons who may have her. These letters have been held and scheduled to be posted in days to come. We ask the greatest respect be given these letters, questions, and answers from June 15, 22, that apply now also. The media manager did not order these letters, but they were written by Don Wells of their own accord. Well is a letter to the person who may have her. These letters have been held okay. in his own accord. These, these letters are not written to manipulate law enforcement yeah. or the American court system. Those individuals saying these statements and who choose to analyze these letters for nefarious reasons should, in the opinion of this editor, be avoided. There is a way to analyze that is humane. The letters will be displayed as received. We all realize that within 30 to 90 days, Mr. Wells will have fully completed his commitment to the Hawkins County Court system. In less than 30 days, Judge Ross will look at the sentence and guide it accordingly. Anything currently posted on social media discussions about Mr. Wells in these days before early August and or October 30th, 2022, or immediately after, is speculation and rumor. Please settle in your hearts to let these letters speak for themselves. May we all allow what is written to nestle in our hearts and our compassion as fellow human beings be our lighthouse. Okay. So right here, when they say, we all realize that within 30 to 90 days, 30 days, you guys, one month, or it could be three more months, Mr. Wells, uh, will have fully completed his commitment to the Hawkins County court system. In less than 30 days, Judge Ross will look at the sentence. So there's your reason, you guys. This don't even take a rocket scientist to figure out. That is, it's he says, it's not to manipulate the court. But that is absolutely what this is. This is absolutely to manipulate the court. Because uh, not only is he going to be getting out of jail and the judge is going to decide if he hasn't done his alcohol treatment or whatever, he might have fully, you know, served his time. But I think there was uh, conditions on his jail term. But anyways, we'll see if the judge gives him the full 90 days or if he'll get out next month. But that's all this is, you guys, is that it is something to make sure that all the news media has him acting like he's so broken hearted. His children are broken. His summer's broken hearted. His children are broken hearted. And he can't get a job. And Candace can't get a job now. Well, we all know that's a bunch of nonsense. Uh, Don knows how to do drywall, and he could start his own business if he wanted to. But, you know, he caused his own problems. He was on YouTube with Candace all the time, drunk and stoned and being a fool. And hopefully the judge will uh, look at some other videos on YouTube and see how Don really acts. And maybe he'll even see mine. Because I'm telling the judge right now, and Don and Tim Mullen, all this is was to manipulate the court, to make you look sad, to make you look feeling bad, and like you're actually doing something, and like you actually care. And you know what, Don? It's always about you. You know, even the letter sounds all about you. And, uh... You know, broken hearted. Summer's broken hearted. Summer's more than broken hearted, Don. You guys have done something to her, and that's more than just broken hearted, okay? And uh you really do seem like you're uh feeling sorry for yourself and you sound like you're trying to push a narrative once again to control this narrative. And uh, hopefully make the judge feel sorry for you once he sees this on the news, right? 
And Tim's helping you push that to all the news medias because I've seen you guys doing that. I've seen it all over the media. And Tim, I'm so ashamed. I mean, you really are awful. I'm sorry. It's the truth. This is my opinion. You're an awful human being and you are no Christian because there's no way that God condones uh, people who neglect, abuse their children, do drugs around their children, domestic violence against their wife. He admitted to the S.A. of his half-sister uh, saying that she, you know, she was five and he was 12 and he admitted that. And then he said that she was coming on to him at five years old. She started it. I'm sorry, you know how the judge is going to react to that? Not good at all. I don't know if Don and Candace think they're going to get out of Dodge or they're going to try to get out of some trouble for this. And another thing, you guys, I truly, truly believe that their court hearing's coming up for uh, Child Protective Services because... They said that, the, you know, they're not trying to influence, I believe it said the, um, sorry, I believe it said, hold on, let me look, let me just back it up. Did accordingly. Anything currently posted on social media discussions about Mr. Wells in these days before early uh, August and or October 30th, 2022 or media. Hold on. All realize that within 30 to 90 days, Mr. Wells will have fully completed his commitment to the... Well, anyways, saying that these aren't to manipulate law enforcement or the American court system. And, uh, you know, and he's trying to say anything that, you know, any rumors about me are not true and blah, blah, blah. And uh, I'm a good guy. And... You know, we just been harassed so bad. We're poor victims. You know, we haven't really searched for our daughter. And we haven't done anything to really try to find her. But, you know, we're going to come out now. After, you know, a year and a couple months. And you're going to come out now. year and a month. And you're going to say, oh, to the kidnappers. Really, Don? Kidnappers? Who are you trying to convince and who are you trying to fool? Because you have not fooled any of us. None of us. Except for your goofy supporters and friends. But you know, Tim, when you find out what Don and Candace did to them, kid, to Summer, I hope God judges you for this. Because you have been backing, defending, pushing. And A.F. Pennington... Uh, she makes me sick, too, that she would actually do this for Don and Candace the way that she supports them. And that video was ridiculous. And I just thought it was the stupidest, stupidest video I ever heard. It was not touching. It was nothing. And Don was ridiculous and talking about himself as normal. And he's trying to manipulate the police. And the judge by getting this pushed out. You're an embarrassment, Tim. Truly, you are. And you're going to have to face, hopefully, some consequences for that from God and the court. And I do think they're watching you too, Tim. But anyways, yeah, everything's all a big excitement and a big whirl because Don wrote a letter. Well, big deal, Don. Like, why does the media even, you know, entertain that? And that letter, that was a joke. Come on. That's really tough, Don. You know, do something now or you're going to face the wrath of God. No, Don, you're going to face the wrath of God. You need to come clean about what happened to your daughter. Um... You guys, I don't know if you've heard, but Andrew Hiltz, which is Hunter's dad, he came out 
and said that uh, when Summer was three years old, Candace had meth on the table. And she got high and she left the room or went somewhere and can't and somewhere got it and she was crying shaking out of her mind because she had that meth in her system you know she could have died then and andy andrew hunter's dad was saying you know can't ally should have you know made you know, should have turned that into the police. And Candace, I don't know what you're thinking, but you can still get in trouble for all this crap. Any accusations, if they find any kind of drugs in summer system when they find her, oh boy, you're really going to be in a world of hurt there. And, uh, you know, you're interfering with an investigation. You're um, misleading the police by not telling them. All these charges are going to be brought up on you. Transferring. If you went out of state, you're really in trouble. Uh, you know, it really bothers me that Jose told... Um, Justice for All, or whatever that guy's name is, J no, Justice for All, told him that Candace told Jose, Jose, that Don took off on drug runs for, on drunk drug binges to Mexico for two weeks, long time you know, for long time periods. And uh, I don't think that, you know, he's on a drug binge. I think that he's trans, he was still transferring drugs. You know, he said that he used, he got in trouble for that, for uh, running drugs to Mexico. And I truly believe he was still doing it and maybe even trafficking. That's my opinion only. Everybody's innocent until proven guilty. And I do believe Tim wants to get some kind of recognition. Uh, if he's selling this story, that's a bunch of bull crap to these news stations. Uh, you know, this is the most appalling thing that I could ever even think of, that a father of a missing five, six-year-old this beautiful little girl right here. That that's all he would do is use this letter to manipulate the courts and the judges. He's not trying to help his daughter. He's not trying to find her. I'm sorry. It's just absolutely terrible. Uh... You know, as we go further into the case, it seems like all we're doing is hearing about more abuse, more abuse. And Don, I don't care. You know, when I seen Don on the behavioral panel, they asked him, go back and watch it. They asked him, did you have anything to do with, the, with Summer missing, with your daughter missing? And he cannot answer them. He stumbles over his words, he stutters, and he doesn't answer them. And then in another interview with the news, I've done a video about it before. Um, he was standing outside a building, and he was talking to the news. And they, the guy asked him if he had anything to do with Summer going missing. And he laughed, and he could not answer that, you guys. So, you know, I know that Don is a big con man. You know, when people go to prison for a long time, which he said that he grew up in prison and in jail and in foster care, that he was always in trouble, and, you know, he likes to blame his whole family. 
he said, uh, his whole family, his whole life were calling the cops on him. And then he, you know, they were always saying he was in trouble. And, uh, blah, blah, blah. Don's always got someone to blame, doesn't he? Yeah. And, you know, Candace, you really make me sick to my stomach. I'm sorry. Sheila from Nature Videos with Sheila. She's seen Candace driving down the road, her car all washed and clean, having a good old time, eh? And, you know, I couldn't believe somebody actually said on a post today, on Don and Candace's post on this official channel, they said, Summer's gone, dead and gone, or something like that. Let the family, you know, move on. Let the family move on. Get on with life. I'm like, really? Really? What do you think this family's been doing this whole time? They've been getting on with their life and doing whatever they want to do. They've had no accountability, but their day's coming. And even that Steve Johnson guy, you know, he said, and he's got an expert opinion. And he believes that, you know, the TBI already know. Because he knows. He knows. They see so many of these guys, they know. And these con people. So many prisoners. You would not believe how many jail guys and prisoners find God. And, you know, they supposedly follow them. But as soon as they get out of prison, boy, they're right back to their same old tricks. So, yeah. Don's a, what do you call it, Christian? Prince County Court System. In less than 30 days, Judge Ross will... He's a prisoner. Uh, Christian. It's like... It never really... Uh... You know, a lot of those people never grow because it's just a temporary. They don't truly make a, a real commitment to God in there. You know, it helps them through. But, you know, Don is a con man and so is Candace. And they like to play tricks on people. And they like to lie. And they like to do all kinds of crazy things. So... It's starting to get interesting. Don's going to be home soon. But I'm really irritated. Oh, I just wanted to scream. Uh, like Don's some kind of superstar or something. I could care less. You know what I mean? Who cares if Don ever gets out of jail? I'm hoping he spends his whole life for what happened to Summer. And who cares if he writes a letter? He needs to practice his English and his writing and spelling because he doesn't even know how to write. I mean, he's got had all this extra time to sit in jail. Why don't you learn about penmanship and about, you know, actual spelling and writing, Don? <laughs> because yours really sucks bad. And, uh, yeah. I don't know, you know that video of him in church just to me made me look made me think that it made him look very guilty and that he was asking God to forgive him for what he did to her. And of course, you know, he would be heartbroken. He would be sad because he did love Summer. But I think other things happened and got in the way. So and Candace, I cannot believe you. Summer Odeon, you can still get in trouble for that, and I hope you do. And your little buddy, Andrew, put that information out there on the web. I hope that all gets to the news, too. Maybe it should. Let's talk about the real Don Wells and Candace. Instead of the one you want to portray to people and pretend that you are. 
But yeah, it's going to get really, really interesting uh, next month. If he comes out, if he even gets, you know, gets to go. And, you know, I really don't know about that case with Mary in Utah. It might take a long time, you guys. That could take a lot longer. You know, I really have no idea. We're just going by what somebody, what the people told her. So I don't know what's going on in the case. I have no idea. But sometimes those things take a long time, just like it's taken a long time to make an arrest in the Summer Wells case. I know they want to find her so that they can prove what happened to her. And I don't blame them. If, I, if somebody knows anything, they need to come forth. If you're, like, in the neighborhood there, and you know Don and Candace Wells and Summer, and you know, you think you know what happened, come forward and, and tell the police, tell someone, please, send an anonymous tip. Send a letter, don't even sign it, just send it and tell them where she is. Because Summer deserves justice, and she deserves closure. And I do not feel sorry for these parents whatsoever and uh i can't wait until they're held accountable for the things they did to that little girl poor summer wells such a precious little baby girl i can't believe all the crap she went through candace how could you i mean don you guys I hope you're not worse monsters. I have a bad feeling, though, that you have been when we find out what happens. Very sad. Uh, cracked me up. Go over and look at Jonathan Lee Riches because he calls up the neighbor of Don Wells. And the neighbor actually tells him that he's sick of these YouTubers yelling, coming on the property, causing health problems for his family, his mother and father. Well, that's really disgusting, Jonathan. I'm sorry. When you and Bullhorn Betty and all of you went there and were screaming and hollering, and you're still going around there doing weird stuff, and you're still bothering all these people that don't even have nothing to do with the case. What the heck does Don Wells' landlord have to do with anything? Oh, Don used to live here. What does Jody Sue's tattoo artist that you went and tracked down, what do they have to do with us? Nothing. It is so dang weird, you guys. And he always gets me. He does, because he puts his clickbait on there. He'll put, like, a title on his video, and I fall for it all the time. He gets me to watch, so he is pretty good with that. But it is pretty, you're pretty um, manipulative, Jonathan, and you're pretty misleading because you're wearing shirts around that say the press, and right now you're nobody's press but YouTube, as far as I know. And that's my opinion of you, but I can't believe you're going around wearing them shirts, bothering people. You really need to get in trouble for that, so... Sorry. That's how I feel about you with this stuff you're doing. But yes, uh, Don is just manipulating again, trying to control the narrative. Tim Mullins is helping him. And Tim Mullins, you should be in trouble for that. And you should be judged because God does not condone what Don and Candace have done. I'm sorry if you think so then you're in a really big denial and you're very blinded to Mullins and you're very foolish because a lot of things are going to come out. You know, poor little Summer right here. She looked really, she kind of looks like she's intoxicated again in this one. And she's really dirty and she's got bruises. And you know, her eyes in this one, I mean, they looked really dilated. Very strange. So, 
and the one in, where she's swimming in the water. Her eyes look real drowsy and like she's kind of out of it. Go, you know, check it out. But anyways, we all love this little girl. We're sorry that something happened to her very bad. And we don't know what it is. But we know that these two did something. They did something. And they don't want to tell the truth. And I hope they get in really, really bad trouble. And I hope they never get out of prison. Because look at her. She didn't deserve none of this. So anyways, yeah, I just wanted to chat a little bit and talk to you guys. And tell everybody that I love you. And I am thinking about you. And I just want wanted to make sure. In case some of you don't follow all these other things. I'm following it for you. I'm keeping an eye on these two parents here. So anyways, God bless you all. And have a good night. And I'll talk to you in a couple days, okay?